everybody. Let's jump right in to some decoupaging with these fun bee napkins. Craft number one. For this craft, we're using a hexagon shaped piece of wood that I did get at the Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square section. I'm using some antique wax and we're just going to stain both sides of this hexagon. And to do that, we're just gonna paint the antique wax all over the hexagon on the sides and on the front and on the back. And this is not a stain itself, it's actually a wax, but it acts like a stain when you put it onto the uh, wood. And then if you wipe it down, it just kind of gives it a nice look and it dries a lot quicker than stain wood. And it doesn't have that smell that you would have in the house when you use real stain. So it's just a little trick you can use using antique wax from Waverly. So the next thing I did here was I grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. I'm just doing a light whitewash on the front side of this sign. And then I'll just dry that so that way um, it kind of gives a more rustic look for this napkin. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to separate out my napkin. And to do this, I grab a piece of painter's tape and I pull off the bottom layers of the napkin. We're just gonna use that top layer. And now I took a paintbrush and I just used a little bit of water on the paintbrush and I'm just gonna slightly tear around the bee on this napkin. And we're just gonna give it a nice little rough edge by doing this. And we're gonna decoupage that piece of napkin onto our hexagon. So I do a quick fit check and I notice that the napkin's a little bit too big. So we grab some more water and the paintbrush and we just trim everything up to make sure that it will fit onto this hexagon. Next, I grab my Mod Podge in matte so I just spread out a nice layer of the Mod Podge onto our piece of wood. Next, I grab our napkin and I go ahead and I just tap that lightly onto the wood. You could also use Saran Wrap, uh, but I didn't have any in there at this time, so I should have, but I didn't. It was fine tapping it down for me. You just have to be really careful. And then I just sanded off any of the edges. And then once everything was dry, we put another coat of Mod Podge over the top to seal everything in. So once that side is completely dry, we're going to flip that piece of wood over and we'll grab our Waverly white chalk paint and we're going to do a nice layer on the back side of this sign. We're making the sign reversible so that way you can see both sides. And I wanted the white paint underneath this because I'm going to decoupage another one of those napkins on top of that and I wanted it to kind of have two different looks with the bees. So one is more rustic and one is more bright and cheery. So this one, um, I'm doing a little bit more Mod Podge. We're gonna do a nice coat here, but we're gonna do a different technique on this side. We're just gonna let that dry really well. And then I'm going to cut out a, another B. And we don't need to trim anything up yet. We're just gonna go ahead and lay that down on top. And you see me there looking on the back side of the piece of wood to make sure our bees are going the right direction. So make sure you do that before you do this so that way you make sure both sides flip around the way you want them to. And then I use an iron and a piece of parchment paper to just iron down that fun napkin. Then we grab our handy dandy zip sander and we just sit, sand in a downward motion and get everything all sanded off. And then I'm gonna use some more Mod Podge and we're just gonna do another nice layer over the top to just seal everything in. So now we're just going to set that aside and let that dry really well. And while that's drying, we can start on the next step. The next step here is I'm taking a candlestick holder that I found at the Dollar Tree, a button, and two different sizes of wood beads. And I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and we're just going to paint a nice coat all around that candlestick. And we're going to also paint the button and the fun bead. And to paint the beads, I'm just gonna use some bamboo skewers and I'm just gonna put the beads on the pointy side of the bamboo skewer. 
And that way it's a little bit easier for me to go ahead and paint these beads. And I keep a set of these skewers just in my craft room and I use them all the time for painting beads. So you can kind of see there's different colors on the skewer and that's because I've painted things in different colors. But it's nice you can just reuse them over and over again until they break. So next, while we have all those beads dry, we're going to take some scrap pieces of ribbon and we're going to make a rustic bow. And you'll probably recognize some of this ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Uh, and then I'm taking a little pipe cleaner right down the center and you kind of pinch the center of these pieces of fabric and it makes a cute little rustic bow. You don't have to do really any tying or anything fancy. It's just that fun little piece holding everything together and it makes it look really nice and fluffy. And then I like to cover that piece of pipe cleaner and I usually just use a piece of ribbon from the bow that I'm making just to kind of make everything match, but you can use whatever you'd like. And then I just hot glue that around the center there and then cut off any excess. Let's put everything together. I grab my candlestick, my two beads, and my button, and then I grab my hexagon shaped sign. And you can see how different the sign looks on either side, just with painting and not painting. And I just love that you can have that different look going on. Next, I'm gonna hot glue that hexagon shape right on top of the candlestick. And that's gonna be our little holder to make this sign look all nice and pretty. And then, after that, we're going to start with putting the button on the top and then we're going to use and put the bigger bead and then we'll do the smaller bead. And I found that hot glue was totally fine keeping all of this put together. So I want to cover that gap that's showing from the candlestick. So I made a basic white, off-white bow um, and I'm just going to put that on the side of the bee that had the white background. And then I'm going to put the more rustic bow that we made a little bit earlier on the side where we did not paint behind the Mod Podge. And now let's flip this around so you can see both sides. And I love how this turned out. One side is a little more chic and the other side's more rustic. And we're off to craft number two. For this craft, we grabbed some wood letters from Walmart and I just flipped them over. We're going to go ahead and remove all the staples and the stickers on the back sides of these. An easy way to remove the stickers would be to use your heat tool or a hair dryer and you warm up the stickers. You should then be able to just peel the stickers right off. The next step is grab a paintable surface and spread out your letters. Once the letters have been spread out, I would grab some Waverly white chalk paint and I'm going to paint the front of the letter and around the sides of the letter. So while we're painting the letters, what three letters would you put on the wall in your house? I went to Walmart to look for some letters and originally I was going to pick the word eat, but they did not have an A. So I was trying to find another three letter word because I really wanted to do this craft and I chose the word fun. But if you have other suggestions on other three letter words you would use for your wall, let me know, I'd love to hear. Thank you. So now that we're done painting the letters, we're gonna set these aside to dry. Let's go ahead and start building the rest of this project. For this step, I used three of the smaller five by seven burlap canvases. I'm arranging these canvases in the shape of a mountain and I'm taping them together with some blue painter's tape. Using my staple gun, I go ahead and I staple these canvases together. Once the canvases are secure, I go ahead and remove the painter's tape. So we'll go ahead and set that aside and we'll get back to making these letters. I found this really cute bee napkin on Amazon and I decided I wanted to use these on the letters and decoupage them on. So I'm using my Mod Podge in matte and I'm going to go ahead and just paint a thin coat on the letters. I would recommend painting two coats on the letters. I didn't for this craft and I wish I would have done that. So if 
I were to do this craft again, I'd paint a thin coat of Mod Podge, let it dry, and then paint a second coat of Mod Podge. So we're gonna repeat this step for all three of these letters. We're gonna set these aside to dry. Once these letters have finished drying, I go ahead and I take my napkin. I'm going to lay that over the top of these letters. And I don't know if you saw me do this earlier, but I did remove the bottom layer on the napkin, so it's just that top layer. And what you can see that I did here is I made sure to position the B, because there's only the one B per quadrant on this napkin, in a spot on the letter so we could see it. To adhere the napkin to the letter, what I use is a hot iron. And I take a piece of parchment paper and I place that over the top of the napkin and I iron the napkin onto the letter. The glue underneath that has dried will warm up and everything will stick together. So now that the napkin is attached to the letter, we're going to go ahead and remove the excess napkin by just cutting that off. Then I will grab my zip sander and I'm going to go ahead and sand in a downward motion to get the remainder of the napkin removed from this letter. And it does a really good job on the outside pieces. For those inner pieces, I did use a razor blade to remove any extra napkin. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm using some Mod Podge and I'm just going to seal everything in. We're going to then repeat this step for all three letters. So now we're going to go ahead and use the iron with the parchment paper and just run that over the U. And now we'll go ahead and sand any of the excess napkin off of this U. And then we're gonna repeat this again for the N. And if you're enjoying this video, please hit that subscribe button down below. I really appreciate all the support. Thank you. So the next step in our journey is we're going to go ahead and make some of the embellishments. For this embellishment, I'm going to make a ribbon bow and I take a piece of ribbon and I just make a quick loop and glue that together with some hot glue. I then cut another strand of ribbon off and make a V shape. And I'm going to go ahead and attach those two items and I'm gonna scrunch them in the center and use a pipe cleaner to go ahead and twist that into place. We'll cut off any of the excess pipe cleaner and then we'll go ahead and cut another small piece of the ribbon that matches. I fold that in half and I'm going to hot glue that around the center of the bow. Once I get all of those items into place, we're going to go ahead and just cut the ends of the bow um, to whichever way you would like. If you want them in diagonal or dovetailed, whatever works best for you. Now that our bow is complete, we'll go ahead and set that aside. Here comes the fun part. We're going to go ahead and put together the sign. I grab my letters and some wood glue. This wood glue is the one from the Dollar Tree and it works just fine. I go ahead and put a few dots of glue on the letter and then I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue in between everything to help everything stay into place. I then go ahead and attach the letters to the canvases. And we're going to go ahead and add all three letters. Once we've added the letters, we're going to add a few other items just to make this a little bit cuter. So I found these burlap flowers at the Dollar Tree and I absolutely love them. I, this is my last flower that I have in the pack. It was a three pack of them, but we're gonna use one on this craft. I'm going to go ahead and hot glue that on. Next, we'll go ahead and hot glue the bow we made a few minutes ago and the cute little bee that I found at Dollar Tree. And now we have a beautiful, fun sign. Craft number three. For this craft, I'm going to use, it's a wood honeycomb looking item from the Dollar Tree. You could maybe say it's a dish, but it's out of wood. It could be a shelf topper, but I'm gonna paint the inside of this wood honeycomb shape. And we're just going to paint that white. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna decoupage over the top. We just wanna make sure that the white shines through. Next, I have these fun stencils from Amazon and they come in a four pack and you can see I'm just gonna cut them into four little squares so they're easier to use 
Now we're gonna grab one of those napkins again and we'll just use our painter's tape and we'll separate out the napkin. And to do this, we're going to determine how we want to set up the napkin in the honeycomb. And so I'm gonna start by flipping everything over and I put the piece of napkin over the top and I'm just gonna trim off some of the pieces of the napkin. Now, of course, it's not perfect the first time you trim everything. So we'll have to just trim a little bit more off of the edges till we get it looking really nice and fits right inside that honeycomb. If you made it this far in the video, please hit that like button below. I'd love to know that you're still here. Now, once everything is fits nicely into our dish, we're going to go ahead and lay out some Mod Podge. And I do this first. And I'm using the matte Mod Podge for this. And I did get this at the Dollar Tree. I like that they're squeezable bottles and it's easy to use. And once we've spread out our Mod Podge, I'm going to go ahead and gently set down the napkin. And I'm using some clear wrap. And I'm just going to just tap lightly until everything is nice and smooth onto the inside of this surface. And I trimmed it a little too short. So what I'm going to do to fix it is I'm just grabbing another little piece of napkin and matching up the best that I can. And I'm just gonna Mod Podge that right down into the corner there. Um, and you can do this from time to time. It's just a way to fix any little mistakes that you might make. And I think it turned out just fine. Now we're gonna grab our Mod Podge and we're just going to paint a thin coat to seal everything in. Once everything is really dry, we're going to grab one of the stencils that we grabbed out earlier. And I grabbed the one that said, always be bumble and kind. And I'm just going to peel that off of the paper backing that it came on. And this is a self-adhesive stencil. So if you haven't worked with them in the past, you can reuse them. So they work really good because they stick nice and easy on your project. And what I just did there was I defuzzed it a little bit so it would pull off of the project easier. And then I go ahead and I lay that down where I want it. And once we're done using the stencil, we can go ahead and wash this in warm soapy water. Now for this stencil, I like to use the chalk paste. It's a thicker paint and I'm using it in the color black licorice, I believe. Um, I I'll put the link down below for you guys, but I just use a squeegee to apply this and I'm just trying to use one motion going downward to try to paint all of that paste over the stencil. And you don't want it to be too thick you want it to just cover everything so you don't want to see any of the white through. And once we get that all covered, I'm going to try to take the stencil off with one motion so it's less likely to run or anything like that. And once the stencil is removed, we're going to set this aside to dry. And while this is drying, we're going to go ahead and make a bow. And I'm just gonna make a quick little bow here. I just make two little loops and I'm just gonna cut off the edge and we're going to use a piece of pipe cleaner to attach everything. So what I do is I pinch it in the center and I twist the pipe cleaner around and just twist really hard and then cut off any of that excess pipe cleaner. And then what we'll do to cover that pipe cleaner, we could leave it the way it is. I mean, the pipe cleaner is silver and it kind of matches the bow but I like to add another little piece of the matching fabric and we're gonna put that right down the center of there. We'll go ahead and dovetail the ends of the bow while we're waiting. We'll cut another piece of the ribbon and we're just gonna fold that in half and then I'm gonna hot glue that around the center of the bow just to give it a more polished look. Now let's go back to our honeycomb. Now that everything is dry, we're gonna use some Jolene finishing wax and just do a light coat over the top of the chalk paste. And once the finishing wax has dried, we'll go ahead and hot glue the bow right onto the project. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget, craft more, stress less.